Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Mm -hmm. Bless his holy name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Blessings to you as well, and thank you for joining Berin Family Worship Centers. Praise group God. study. Amen. Hallelujah. You're Amen. our live stream. And we are so delighted to have you here. I am Dr. Joycelyn Yvonne Purnell Henderson, and this is my husband, uh, Dr. Walter Henderson III, mm -hmm. and we are some of the senior leaders for Berean Family Worship Center. Praise and God. again, welcome. Uh, we are here for group study, and if you're desiring to obtain the group study notes, all you do is go out to the website of BerenFamilyWorshipCenter.org, mm -hmm. and right under the inspirational corner, you should be able to download those to whatever device that you have. Um, tonight's teaching is requirements of stewards. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I'm going to ask if you will go on and grab your Bibles, get seated mm -hmm. as we search the scriptures tonight, um, starting with the opening prayer out of Lamentations 3, and just going to read uh, four verses, 21 through 25, and we will pray that back to the Lord. Again, a loud shout out of welcome this afternoon, evening, morning, late midnight, whenever you are getting the opportunity to view this. Mm -hmm. Lamentations 3, verse 21 through 25, and reading it out of the King James Version, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. It is the Lord's mercies. Praise God. That we are not consumed. Thank you, Lord. Because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Mm -hmm. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, mm -hmm. saith my soul. Sometimes you need to tell your soul that it's going on in my soul to speak the word of God. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. To the soul that seeketh him. Mm -hmm. The word of God said that the Lord is good unto them that wait for him. I believe tonight that all I need to say is wait for him. Hallelujah. Praise God. He might not come when we want him. Mm -hmm. uh, we might not come as we're praying and crying and you know falling out. Mm -hmm. But whenever he comes. It is in his time. And praise amen. God. Father, we just thank you tonight. Thank you, Lord. And we honor you and we give you praise for this another opportunity to gather in your presence mm -hmm. one more time. And we are so grateful that you are dwelling in the midst of us because you are here. Thank you as we recall to our minds, hallelujah, your word. We find hope in you. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. It might not look like it, you know, it is going to win. It might not look like that we're going to succeed, but we find hope in your word Praise tonight. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank and you, And we understand that Thank if uh, we understand and know that if you are on our side, mm -hmm. we shall not be moved. Thank Glory you. to God. Praise uh, God. We don't have a clue what we would be if we had not had mm -hmm. you uh, on our side. And your compassion tonight. It never fails. So we mm -hmm. thank you for being a long-suffering God. Thank you, A Lord. merciful God. Thank you, A Lord. patient God. Yes. And also, God, we do avouch you to be our Lord, our Savior, mm -hmm. and a faithful king tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise. You reign supreme. Right now, whatever you say, no man can change it. Mm -hmm. Whatever you decide, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And so we thank you tonight for being faithful. Thank you. You are our portion. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And we make our stand with you. Mm -hmm. And we rest waiting to see Hallelujah. how you will work out every Glory circumstance, every situation. Because, Lord, we know that you have our best interest in heart. Mm -hmm. You said, Lord God, that the way of the righteous you know the way we Praise take. God. Hallelujah. Thank you. So Father. I say thank you tonight. Thank you, Thank Lord. you for healing and restoration, mm -hmm. wholeness and wellness and soundness in every area. Hallelujah. I thank you right now, Lord God, that your word has come to, de to liberate, mm -hmm. to set the captive free. Mm -hmm. Your word has come to be even as sharper than any two-edged sword. Yes. And it will go in and it will decide and it will divide that that is not of you. And that that is of you. So we say thank you. Thank you. Lord. We evoke Praise your presence right now mm -hmm. uh, through the airways, also inside of the place where we are residing. We say even now, Lord God, reign supreme, that you will shine brightly and that you will live large inside of us. 
none of us, mm -hmm. but all of you. All of you, Lord. We say, Praise Lord God, God, open our mouths, and we do declare right now, you are filling our mouth mm -hmm. with your word. Help us to be not only a hearer of the word, yes. but a doer only. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we Praise thank you. God. Thank, thank you, Thank you that you're here. Hallelujah. Thank you that you're dwelling in the midst of thank us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that your mercies are new. Thank you that you've given us a new day. Hallelujah. And I thank, thank you, you because Father. of a new day. It is a new mercy. Yes. We bless you. We give you praise. Yes, we, we give you God. thanksgiving Hallelujah. for who you are mm -hmm. and for whom we belong to. Thank you, Father. Now we say strengthen us even now to do the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise thank God. Thank you for being here, Lord yes. God. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Pastor, is on you. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. We're so glad. Again, one more time, praise yes. God. The song say the Lord, the has, Lord has allowed Come on us together. One, one more time. time. Praise God. We're we on the rights of that one. Oh, we? we blessed God. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thank the Lord for Hallelujah. you being with us. And amen. We're continuing in a series that we have been doing. Our scripture reading, we'll talk about that in just a minute. The series is 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verses 1 and 2. If you have your Bibles, let's look at it because we're going to talk about that just for a few moments. And then we'll get on into our lesson mm -hmm. plan. In 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, beginning there at verse 1, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ Come on. and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Mm -hmm. A male man and well, a female, female man, man. Praise <laughs> God. Both be found faithful. Hallelujah. Praise God. We'll continue on our series entitled Faithfulness. And again, and Sister Anderson has said the requirements of stewards, which we want to talk about. And we have talked previously about faithfulness is so important because what God wants to do is create a faithfulness in us in everything that we do, not just concerning uh, our marriage or concerning uh, good workers or concerning mm -hmm. all of those things. He wants to create faithfulness in us in everything we do. And if that is true, then we would be no less faithful stewards of the Lord God Almighty. Amen. And so it is wonderful. And God wants to do that because guess what his nature is? He is faithful. He's a faithful yeah, God. Yeah. Amen. He's I'm glad about faithful it. to his word. <laughs> All right. So God wants to do that in us. So let's talk about it. Praise God. First of all, in the scripture there, it said that uh, Paul said that he was a faithful minister. Now, when we talk about ministers there, the Greek word is huperetes. Now, it's a two-part word. It's very important. And many times I give these words not just so we can just talk about the Greek. The English sometimes fail to really give us the meaning of the word and what it really gives the detail of it. And it means something, praise God, to understand. That's why we study. And so when this is a two-part word. The first word is hupo. In the Greek, it means under or beneath. And the second part is erectus, which means, uh, listen to the word, uh, under roar. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is manaya or lowly. And it means to be subordinate, it, who, uh, a subordinate who waits to accomplish the command of a supporter, of superior. Now, an uh, under rower was someone who was in a ship, and they were the one that was a slave. In fact, they were the slaves of the slave. They were down in the bottom of the ship, and they would help row that big ship. They, many times they were chained in there, so that if something happened, uh, they were, let's say they met a ship and a war happened, they couldn't just get up and leave. They were changed down in there. And these were the lowest of the slaves. And again, that's why it's called a manaya work. But think about it, what Paul is saying that when he talks about himself as being that minister. Mm -hmm. Also, the servants there, the Greek word is okonomos, and it's a two-part word. Okos always means something to do with the house. But the second part of that word is nemo, and that's where we get that nomos from. That's another verb translated, but nemo means to deal out, and what it means to distribute or an apportion. So it is an administration, administrator, a person who manages the domestic affairs of a family or business. So many wealthy people or had, they had with part of their slaves or those who were serving, they would appoint, if you will, mm -hmm. someone who would be the administrator for them. And they would be, watch this now, over the rest of the uh, hired servants or the hired slaves, they would be over them. This person was very trusted. 
And so this person would literally run the house and would tell the other servants or slave what to do. But now they had to always be mindful that these people did not belong to them. Come they on. belonged to the one in whom they served. And so even though they would tell them what was said and they would hold accountable, then what would happen at that point is that the, the owner then would deal with them. Just like many times when we talked about our children, praise God, we leave our children and have the older person there, praise God, to tell the other children what to do. Now, you didn't want that older child whooping them or correct, doing a lot of correcting. When you got home, they would tell you what had happened, and then you had to deal with it. Unless that was a much older child, smaller child, and you gave them that authority, that would be fine. So... Paul understood some things about himself, and he was always trying to not bring himself to a higher standard. He understood that when you're going to give the glory to God, it is not about you. Come on. And it has to be understood that what you do, you do for him. And so the people that you serve are not yours, and when you mistreat them, listen, God's going to hold you account. Yes. Yeah, now, good. that's very, very important. And so within that understanding that it's no longer, it's like that within the local church, uh, the pastors or the elders that are there, praise God, they're there as, watch this, as the servants. They're there mm -hmm. to represent the, Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, they've been given a charge to ha also hand down some other orders, if you will, to other people. But the Lord is watching how you treat his people. Glory, glory. That's very important to him. And so therefore, we can't justify our anger or justify our tones or justify how we behave. But now, if we're not holding people accountable, God will deal with us as well. Yes. So it's very important. Paul considered himself un an underroar, which were galley slaves in the body of Lord's ship responsible for rowing these large crafts. They were the lowest of the lowest slaves. Also, many times the stewards were entrusted slaves and were given very different authority. But notice how Paul always tried to carry himself in humility. He understood that humility is very important for God to really put more and more trust yes. in you and me. Praise God. And so that's what Paul was. The steward had to be found faithful, reliable, and trustworthy. That is so good. And so if the steward, before the uh, person that was over them would tr trust them, they had to see these different things within them. They had to see that they was faithful. They had to see that they was reliable. They had to see that they was trustworthy. Many times on the jobs, and people are getting promoted, uh, the person that promoted them have seen these different things within that person, praise God, before they promote them. I mean, if you're not faithful, if you're not reliable, if you're not mm -hmm. trustworthy, why should you be promoted? That's good. And many times we want God to use us in a greater way, but if we're not faithful, if we're not reliable and trustworthy, God would place us in a situation to see how we're behaving and then he would determine whether to promote us at that point. In fact, one scripture says, if you're not faithful in another man's vision, well, well, you know, why would the Lord give you that one? God would place you under authority to see how you handle authority. And therefore, and see if you are faithful and consistent before he takes you and places you in other places. So let us, praise God, learn from Paul. Paul was tremendous, but he carried himself in a great humble way. He knew how to love the body of Christ, to love those that he came to serve. He was willing to give himself and really, watch this, become a servant even to them. And when you have that type of humility, that is very important. Do you know that's what Jesus Christ did for yeah, you and us? Amen. He became here to serve us. Amen. He told Peter, sit down, I'm going to wash your feet. Praise God. For many of us, we say, I ain't washing your feet. That ain't happening. <laughs> Praise God. But you have to understand that's how God works. God works through that humility. He empowers because really our trust is in him and not in humans. Amen. You know, Pastor, when you read that part about the steward had to be found faithful, mm -hmm. reliable, mm -hmm. and trustworthy. Yes. I want to talk about that. Just Go right minute. ahead. Because as I was reading that, I thought about those are what I would label character traits. Mm -hmm. And if those character traits is what God is looking for, then it has to be character traits that we find in God. Absolutely. Because he doesn't require anything of us that, that he has not already walked out, meaning when he sent his son Jesus. That's right. And so when I think about 
you know, one being faithful, reliable, and trustworthy. Mm -hmm. Why is it then that when it comes to, and let's talk about the church, mm -hmm. you know, that's what we gathered tonight. Right. Why is it then that we rely on gifts and what people can bring in the way of gifts and talents mm -hmm. more than on what their character mm -hmm. uh, would uh, be able to keep them in. It is so easy to have gifts and talents in an area, but our character is the only thing that's going to be able to keep us in. Absolutely right. If we have a, if, if they say on the street, a raggedy character uh, at our homes, uh, at the workplace, uh, in our communities, when we get to the quote unquote church mm -hmm. facility, our character still is the same. Now we might have some gifts, we might have some talents, mm -hmm. and you know, and people might you know, flock to that. But God is desiring that us as men and women of God will have godly character. We will be also found faithful. Faithful in what? What He has called us to do. Mm -hmm. Faithful, then reliable. So if you if, if we're not faithful. We definitely can't be reliable. Mm -hmm. And then that latter part says trustworthy. Praise God. Um, God is a God that we can trust. If he said it in his word, he is a big enough God and also a faithful enough God and a character operating God that he'll do what his word says. God and his word is one. So we cannot pull, you know, some part of his word out and say, you know, he's going to do this. Either he's trustworthy or he's not. And so it comes down to the same thing with us. We cannot just come to one place and be trustworthy. Trustworthy have to become a absolute character of the men and women of God. And so as I read that and began to look at it and break it down, uh, we must be found. That means that when people are looking at us, mm -hmm. uh, when they are hearing our voice, mm -hmm. or when they are seeing what we're doing, they must find faithfulness, number one, reliability and then trustworthy because all of those will be the characters that God is asking for each one of us to operate in. Very true. And as we said before, you know, we've talked about this many times, God is not impressed with our gifts. And, yes, sir. And when we're building our own kingdom, it's really about our gift and our talents. It's about focus on me. And when you're building the kingdom of God, it has to be the focus on the Lord God Almighty. Mm -hmm. God can find anybody to do it better than you and me. And, and, and if we continue in a certain attitude, God will let you know, I can find somebody to do it better than yes, you. Yes, Lord. But what God, that part, the gift gave to us, so there's nothing to boast about because God gave it to us. We give God the glory for it. But the character is something we have to choose. The faithfulness is something we must choose. And so God is looking at our choices. And that's going to be very, very important for us as believers. If we're going to put our hand to the plow, let's be faithful in it. Amen? Let's do it. Let's be trustworthy. Let's be consistent in it. But let's try to do that with everything we do. On our job, they're watching for consistency. They're yeah. watching for faithfulness. If not, they won't let us go. They need somebody they can depend on and count on in those positions. And so even if somebody has less talent, if they're faithful and trustworthy and committed, they'd rather have them. Uh, under uh, n number one, Roman number one, as believers, we are ministers, servants of Christ. Ephesians 6 and 6 says, not with eye service as mm. men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God. How? From oh, the heart. God. Praise God. So if you and I are going to serve the Lord, we must do it from the heart. We're not there to please men. Now, listen, I have found that if you please the Lord, especially with believers and whatever, then listen, you're going to please people. See. Now, if you're trying to please the world, that ain't going to happen because when you please Christ, they already hate him. So you understand that's not going to please them. But those who love righteousness, those who love the word of the Lord, if you please the Lord, you're going to please them mm -hmm. as well. Number A. Paul placed his status as a servant of Jesus Christ before his calling. Notice on his introduction, we read the scripture. Paul talks about his position as a servant before he gave his title. I'm not finding a whole lot of that today. Mm -hmm. People are coming and giving you their title. <laughs> Amen. And the other part, you know, that, that servant part may not or may or may not show up. Listen to Romans number one and one. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ. Called, called to be an apostle separated 
unto the gospel of God. Now notice his criteria. Know how he stated. He said, first of all, I'm a servant of Jesus Come Christ. On. He said, first of all, I want you to know that I am, listen, committed. I'm a bond slave to mm -hmm. him. Praise God. So whatever I'm doing is not about me. Whatever I'm doing, I'm carrying out orders. I I'm focusing on pleasing the one who called me. That's Praise so God. Good. That's my focus right there, first of all. Now, he goes on to say, uh, uh, in there, uh, he said, not with eye service or, uh, again, I'm, I'm sorry, Roman number one. He goes on to say, call to be an apostle. He said, that's my calling. Mm -hmm. And then he said, I've separated him to the gospel of God. So there comes a point when he accepted his call that he said, I'm going to separate myself from some things now. Have you done that? Lord, when God. you got born again, when you accepted your call, when you know that you're called, that immediately there had to be some separation from some things. Praise God. And you and I have to come to that place that we're not trying to get people to focus on us or get for the seal. Now, don't get me wrong. The flesh always going to want that. Mm -hmm. You and I are going to have to deal with it. There's no such thing as I can't be tempted like that. Listen to me. Either you're deceived. <laughs> or, uh, or something going on wrong with you. It's part of that flesh yes, nature. You understand? Yes. You and I have to defeat it. The Bible said that, with, uh, that amen, through Christ, amen, sin shall not have dominion over us. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it ain't going to show up, though. <laughs> it means that we, it, we, we're not going to allow it through the blood of Jesus yeah. and by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost to dominate us, though. Praise God. That's good. So, and, and, and we have to understand that it shows up. I don't care who we are and those things. So, but Paul wanted to make it clear. Galatians 1 and 10 said, for do I now persuade men or God? If you are more impressed trying to impress people, some of us spend a whole lot of time, and, and you know, it can be every one of us. Now, I want to understand, mm -hmm. trying to persuade people that we who we are, you know, <laughs> tell them about what we've done, and we keep going on and on. And listen, it can happen to any one of us, please. It, it, we're not, don't ever think you or me are, you know, we're above this. That's right. We need to understand that the devil wants us to think that we are. <laughs> now, listen to me. Uh, but listen what he says again. For I do not persuade men. He said, do I persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. My, my, my. He said, you cannot please Christ and men at the same time. No, sir. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Praise God. Now, and so he makes sure they understand that, look, I'm first and foremost a servant mm -hmm. of Christ. Are you? Amen. Now, see, Titus 1 and 1, Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect. And the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. Notice what he said. Truth is always after godliness or godlikeness. Truth will cause you and I to be godlike in the sense of our character, our nature, and our personality. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the word of God will do. It is to bring us like that. When I act in a way, and I know God ain't the way God acted, the Holy Spirit really chastised me about it. He said, now that, that's not acting godlike. And praise God, you know, but in the world, it'd been cool, though, Sister Henderson. <laughs> it would have been all right. It'd been, but, but I have to consistently understand that God wants me to be Christ-like. That's what the Holy Spirit is in you and me, working mm -hmm. Christ-likeness. He planted one son to get many sons. Oh. Praise God. All right? So we can be those things. Under Roman number one, B, when Paul was introducing or speaking of his other co-workers, he spoke of them as being servants of Christ Jesus. Philippians 1 and 1, Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ. Notice that. He said with Timothy, I can say that this fellow is a servant yeah. of Christ. Yeah. Amen. When he introduced him, I can say this is a true servant of Christ. Not this is a, a super deacon. This is a super apostle. This is a super this. Pray God, he is a servant of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. if, they, if that is the only name that one can call me in truth and Come don't on. call me Come pastor, on. don't call me this or that, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Because to God, that is of great value. Mm -hmm. Praise God. If they know that that's true about me or you, then praise God. If they don't call the other name, don't get upset. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They didn't call me by my title. They, they listen. Listen, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. But it's good that people understand that you are a servant of Jesus Christ. Yes, praise Amen. God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, look at Colossians 4 and 12. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, Lord. saluted you, always laboring fervent for you in prayer, 
that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Notice he just, just called him a servant of God. Didn't call him any other title, any other name. He said, listen, this, this fellow is a true servant of Christ. And he prays for you consistently. This is very important because he's introducing them, praise God. Sometimes even when people introduce us, praise God, they got four or five different names, you know, you're this and you're this and you're this, I'm this and I'm mighty this and all of this, you know. I'm not knocking, but please, why don't we give God glory? Yes. Amen. Amen. If you say a man of God, if you say a servant of Christ, if you say those things, folks, no one is undercutting us. Praise God. This is a tremendous thing. Go ahead, sister. I want to talk about this, this one you just uh, Go right ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, when you w look at that, it says, you know, first of all, he's called Epaphras, one who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluted you always. So, and then he goes on, laboring fervently for you in prayer. Now, he's already gave his title as mm -hmm. a servant of Christ. And mm -hmm. he says that he has labored for you in prayer fervently mm -hmm. that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. You know, so often we don't give honor to also honor to honor who's, who's due to honor. Mm -hmm. So often when we see men and women of God that are standing on the forefront doing what they're doing, they better have a Epaphras. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. If, if we, we don't have somebody praying or, you know, a, a, Aaron and her, uh, Daniel and Danielle, or somebody that is right now standing and praying and interceding on our behalf that the word of God says here that we might stand perfect. That would be complete mm -hmm. in the things that of the will of God that Amen. God has called us to do. Amen. Sometimes we want to take all of the credit for whatever it is that you know, your folks might see or what they think that has happened. But I am so grateful here when Paul acknowledged the fact I got somebody that's standing in the gap for me and standing in prayer that my faith will not fail me mm -hmm. and that I will be complete in the will of God for whatever it is that God has called me to be. Exactly. He was saying that, listen, he's one of you, but he's praying for you. Mm -hmm. And listen, no successful ministry. No will wow. will be successful without someone praying and having prayer partners. It's, it's just not going to happen. N not consistently now. You, we can have up and down and flow here and here. It is very important, not only that we are people of prayer, but and that we would have people praying with us and for us, and we are praying with and for people. Praise God. The Bible said that we should be known as a house of prayer. It is a house of prayer. And so Glory we, to God. everything should be soaked in prayer. Everything that we do should begin in prayer and uh, sincere prayer because our trust is in God. Mm -hmm. And again, not in our talent and the gifting and people. Praise God. I'm telling you the truth. Thank the Lord. Berean has intercessors. Thank They're praying. Lord. Praise God. But and thank the Lord that we have ministers and that are prayers and, and know how to pray and stand in continual prayer. Thank God that we have people part of the congregation that yes, are praying. Yes, thank you, Father. I I tell you, great blessing for me to hear people say, Pastor, we pray for you all the time. I get very encouraged when I hear that because you you understand why some things are working for you. Praise God, not because your gift and talent. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Those things will not do it alone. We got to have people of prayer. And yet he introduced him as a servant. And he, he says, listen, he's praying for you. That's right. Interceding for you. And he's praying to a specific purpose. That, that prayer had that you would be perfect or complete, as Simpson said, in all the will of God. Mm -hmm. He's saying, God, show them your will. That's right. Help them to understand what the will of God is for them. And we need to pray that for each other. And I, this is a consistent prayer for, for myself, mm -hmm. for my family. It is, praise God. Because this time, let's tell the truth. We don't know what to do. That's right. There's things going on. We say, Lord, I don't know what else I can do. Praise God. So help me to understand your will so I can do it your way. Praise God. In regards to how I feel or what I think, mm -hmm. God showed me how to do this. All right. James now, one and one. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. Now notice that. Again, James, the servant of God. It, it, is, is it hitting us yet? 
You know, all of us, that, that, that we are the servants of God. Amen? Yes. We, 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 that means our first loyalty, our first, everything we have is to him first. Praise God. Not when I can get around to you, God. I'm going to try to fit you in there somewhere now. But right now, I, I can't do that. No, 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 no. And it's, it's something lacking of, oh, I know God. I don't care how well you can preach, teach, pray. Mm -hmm. Listen, there's a lack of revelation there. Then I understand that you're a servant. A servant can't sit and determine when they're going to go and they can't go. My, my. A servant is saying, Lord, when you say go, I'm going. That, that's the bottom line. And so that's what we have to understand. All right? Second Peter 1 and 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Now notice what Peter's saying. Mm -hmm. See, they knew, they understood. James said, let me introduce myself to you. I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. Look at Peter said, let, may I introduce myself to you? I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. Can you introduce yourself to me? Can I introduce myself to you? Mm -hmm. It's not that we said it all the time, but, but when they were writing, they wanted to make it understood that, listen, I'm not here trying to lord over you. That's right. I'm not here trying to be better than you. I'm not here thinking I'm better. I'm up here and you down there. Yeah, I'm Listen, a, I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. Lord to God. And he has sent me to serve you. Mm -hmm. If I'm so great, you know, then God can't send me because <laughs> you understand, I think I'm better than you. I know more than you. Y'all don't know nothing. God said, you know what? I didn't send that one. Mm -hmm. Praise God. It's very important. All right. Revelation 1 and 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come. To show unto who? His servant. Now, there's some folks in servant, they might not be getting some revelation. <laughs> I'm simply saying, praise God. He's showing some things to his servant because the servant's going to operate right. And that's going to be very, very important. Which shortly must come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Now, listen, this book of Revelation it is very important that we understand that. Mm -hmm. All right, we're under Roman number two and C. Even though each one that he spoke of were children of God. Roman number one and C. No, it's, I'm sorry, you're correct. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Roman number one and C. Even though each one that, that he spoke of were children of God, their humility was displayed as servants of God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. D, servants. Now, it's, this is the same word, but it's a different Greek word, doulos. It, it means slave, literally or figuratively. It's a metaphor. One who gives himself or herself up to another's will. Those wh whose service is used by Christ in extending and advancing his cause among men. That's good. Those are the ones, male and female, God's going to use. Those who give up their will to serve the will of the one who sent them. Mm -hmm. You know, God will give us a choice. It, Lord said, you know, it's your choice. Now, if you want to serve me, here's what it's going to take. Why? Because we're dealing with an intellect so much better than ours. Yes. Things that we don't know. Someone who knows the end at the beginning. And he's not going to have to, ex you know, tell you everything you need to know before you do it. He's give you a word. He wants you to follow. It. Now, one of the things in the military, one of the first, they used to, I don't know if they still do, when they're going to train you, one of the things they want you to do is learn to obey an order without taking 30 minutes to explain <laughs> to you why, why? You, why you got to do this. <laughs> and the reason they're doing it is not so they can just lord over you. In a battle situation, bombs are going. I don't have time to see him 20 minutes explain to you why I gave you that yeah. order. Oh. I need you to move when I gave you that turn. God wants to train you and I that we would come to a place that we so he, um, not only hear his voice, but when he said move, we oh. move. We, we don't have to, uh, he don't have to explain 30 minutes to me. Now, I don't know about you, but in the house I grew up, my parents had got to a certain point, they weren't going to explain to you it's why. So right. It, it wasn't going to happen. You know, sometimes they would tell you, but then when you get to doing a lot of whys, they say, I said do it. And, and they would give you a look and let you know, I mean now. Because it comes to a point that I may need you to do something. I don't have 30 minutes to explain it to you. And so hopefully we put ourselves in a position that we're trustworthy ourselves mm -hmm. so people can trust what we ask them to do. Praise God. So that's very, very important. All right. We're at Roman number two now, I believe. Mm -hmm. As believers, we are also stewards, look at this, of the mysteries 
of God. Glory. Stewards, manager, or trustees of the household of affairs of another. Again, there we go. Mystery, secrets of hidden purposes of something or someone. Now, we're going to get into this a little bit deeper in just a moment. But it's like someone give you a secret to something and ask you to now take that, to use that knowledge of that secret to carry out some plan. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are not trustworthy, you don't get the secret. If you are one of those television, like television, tell Walter, and either way, that's all going to come out, then God can't trust you. There comes a time that you and I, there's something we have to hold sacred. There's something that we hold, and God will tell us who to tell or who to share with mm -hmm. the mysteries of God. Now, the mystery means something God has given us a revelation. Now, he wants us to take that revelation and release it. Not holding revelation. That's good. And that I'm doing it, so I'm the only one has this one. There ain't a lot of people got this now. I got it. Okay, then share it then. If you've been given and God has broken down to you, you should be able to take it now and share it with the body of Christ. But we, God doesn't, there's certain things God's not going to reveal to people who will not tell it the way he gave it to them. Or tell it in a way that brings him glory and honor. Or tell it in a way that extend the kingdom of God. I'm telling it in a way to make me look like I'm super smart and you're not. That's a big difference. And we need to understand that when God give us revelation, it is always not only for us to have action in what we do, but it's also to share with the body of believers. Yes, thank you, Lord. All right. Praise God. Now, let's continue. In our lesson text, Paul wanted the Corinthians to view them as stewards and trustee of the secret purposes of God. He indicated in verse 2 that the steward must prove himself worthy of God, trust to receive this revelation. Let me read that again. My, my, my. He indicated in verse 2 that he, the stewards must prove themselves worthy of God's trust to receive this revelation. Let me go, go back mm -hmm. and read that, that second verse then again. 1 through 2, first. Let a man so account of us as the minister of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. You're reading from 1 Corinthians? Uh, yes, 1 Corinthians 4. And again, what we, our, our scripture text we open with. Uh, let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Verse 2, moreover, it is required in stewards that they be found faithful. My, my, my. Right. my. And so it's very, very important you understand that God said, now the stewards that I'm willing to trust, they have to be faithful people. Mm -hmm. So th this is very important that we understand there's some kind things God has not released to us because we have not been faithful. Right. He had and I, I, when I say us, I mean all of us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. I'm sorry. You're going to say yeah, something. I would just, as you was, was mentioning that, mm -hmm. we uh, have to come to a place that God will find us worthy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it comes down to um, is the requirement that he requires. And he's the one now can determine whether we have now met that requirement. Sometimes we haven't met the requirement because we, he has not been able to find us worthy, meaning trustworthy, to be able to receive what it is that he's desiring to give us. That's true. And so it, that's got to be key. We've got to come back to a place mm -hmm. that we can have the character that he has, and that is one of trustworthy. Now, we're going to see this as we go down here now to Roman number three. It's, it's really going to explain what we've been talking about in that in much more detail. Whatever revelation that God has revealed unto you, you are now to be a steward of that mystery. Come on. God is expecting you to be faithful to that revelation. God reveals something to you. Now, you and I, when we get revelation, we have to incorporate it into our lives. We have to, it's not enough for me to know the word, but I'm not mm -hmm. going to do it. Because my revelation from that part will begin to go dark. I'm going to show this to you now. So God will give me a revelation, but if I don't implement that into my life, after a while, it, it, it doesn't have an effect upon me. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it, praise God. I know what God said. I know what the word declared to me, but I'm not willing to do that. God said there's no reason to give, give you any more. That's right. I, I, I'm not going to give you any more. Now, watch this. Under Roman number 3a, what you don't know, you are not required to act upon it. Once you receive B, once you receive, this is Roman 3B, once you receive a revelation and you don't apply it in your life, 
you will regress. That means to go backwards in your zoe, that is the God kind of life. Right. See, when God gives you something, it's for the God kind of life mm -hmm. so that you can be more God-like, more Christ-like, and that, that brings more authority, that brings more anointings in your life, praise God. But when you don't do it, with God, you don't stand still. Come on. You're either going forward or you're regressing. Yes. And so that's what it is. The Bible said, walk, we're to walk with the Lord. I mean, <laughs> he's a moving target, folks. <laughs> we got to keep walking, praise God. If you're going to walk with the Lord, he's a moving target. Why? God has a destination for yes, our life. Yes, come on. God is moving us to something, and praise God. And if you're not willing to go forward, then you are regressing. All right? Now, let's look at this. Now, Mark 4, 24 through 25, I'm going to read the Amplifier Classic in this. Sister, would you turn in if you could? Mark 4, 24 to 25. Would you get it in your Bibles as well? Mark 4, 24 to 25. And I would like the King James, Sister Henderson to read it. But I'm going to read it also in the Amplified Classic because it does exactly what I just said. It amplifies that particular passage of Scripture. So Mark the fourth chapter, verse 24 and verse 25. Whenever you get that, Sister Henderson, in the... So if you want to go on and read it out of your version, then I will get it and read it out of... Okay. And he said unto them... Be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear. Now notice that you're going to hear the truth, but once you get the truth, you've got to give study to it. Now know that we, hear, we, we can hear the word of God all the time. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But I, as you hear me say often, but many times what I'm sharing with you is your assignment. I, I, but see, Right now, you heard me, but you know what I know. But if you and I don't get study to it, some of the stuff I'm teaching, I've heard too. But I went to study it, praise God, because I want to get more revelation. Let me say it again. And he said unto them, be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more Beside we be given unto you who hear. For to him who has will more be given, and from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away by force. Regress. You see what I'm saying? You got a revelation. If you don't walk in it, you're going to start a regress. Okay, so you got King Mark James? Mark 4, 24 through 25. Okay. And he said, this is the King James Version, and he said unto them, take heed what you hear, and with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. Unto you that hear, more will be given. In other words, if you don't hear, go ahead, Sister Henderson. For he that hath to him shall be given, mm -hmm. and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he had. So you see, you're not. There's no standing still. Not standing still. Amen. You're either regressing. Are you moving forward with the Lord? And that's why God will take some time, even in my own life. Let me take my own life. Some area I've gotten slack in, and I'm not walking that out completely the way I do. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit, going to deal with me about that. So I go back, and not just say I'm going to do it. I've learned, I used to say that, but I still end up not doing it. Yeah. Um, maybe you didn't do that. But, but when I take that word and let it deal with my heart about it, you know what? There's a conviction comes up on it. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit is showing it. He said, I'm here to help you. Let, let's get back at it. And when you do that, you'll find, praise God, you begin to move back. Because, again, the Holy Spirit has a destination to get you and me too. Come on. Praise God. So that's going to be very important. All right, let's look at C. Some saints are not walking in some blessings of God because they would not apply the revelation which God revealed to them. Mm -hmm. So God said, I really can't trust you with this. I showed you, I needed you to go study it and get it, so it can get into your heart. The Holy Spirit could open it up and give you revelation, more revelation, because what I did is gave you the primer, if you will. I gave yeah. you the beginning, if you will, but I needed you to go study it so you can get more in depth in it, and I wanted to show you something. And so that's going to be very, very important. But, but no, that's why sometimes people say, you know, Pastor, I don't know what happened. I mean, I was doing good, but right now I'm, I'm in a bad, you know, I'm not in a good place. Well, I, I can understand because the regression takes place. Well, how do I understand? Because that's been me before. More than one time, I can assure you. Praise God. And so I didn't walk out that word. And when you don't, you need to understand, just like I had to understand, mm -hmm. praise God, that listen, 
You're not going to keep going forward. There's no reason to give you more. It's like you went to school and you got you learned two plus two is four. Mm -hmm. Well, in the next grade, they wanted you to get, you know, more, and that's the multiplier. But you didn't want to do two plus two. And now you you want to do, and they said, no, you, you can't do multiply if you can't add. It's going to be very, very important. So please understand, God wants to keep pounding revelation on you and me. He's not, you know, trying to determine who or what. For my call and my life, God said, I got more than you had. I remember I used to be preaching. I said, oh, that's such a good word. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I ought to say that. And, and the Lord looked at me and said, you ain't even touched the revelation <laughs> I have for you. What are you talking And he, he can tell me that today. I'm, I'm, I'm ministering stuff today. It's just still wonderful to me. But I've been doing this so many years. And God said, listen, we haven't really tapped yet. And so what happened is you don't have to worry about saving it. That's right. God got more than you can use and more than I can use. So praise God. I had to learn that as a, a minister that praise God. And he used to say, if I gave it to you, it's for now. That's right. Preach that word. Praise God. And then what you need for next time, I'll give you another word. So it's going to be very important. You know, Pastor, when you hear this scripture that talks about faith comes by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing the word of God. We have to understand that hearing is with your uh, natural ear. But when we hear it and it becomes a part of what our heart dictates for God saying for us to do, mm -hmm. we don't only become just a hearer of the word, mm -hmm. you know, through faith. We become a doer of what the word of God says through faith by that same faith. Mm -hmm. And so if we don't move out and do what we have heard, then we are standing what I call stagnated. Yeah. And God would never operate in stagnation. Mm -hmm. uh, when he sees somebody stagnated, he just says next. Mm -hmm. Because God wants us to be just like he is, and that is at all times moving about to do what it is that his word has decreed and declared. Absolutely. His word says that once we get the word, taste and see that the Lord is good, and once we get that, we're going to be running now to do what the word of God says. Very true. Otherwise, we come mm -hmm. out. I, I agree with that 100%. What we have also too often done is we have faith come by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing the word of God. Amen? Now, please understand something. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. See, you don't necessarily get faith the first time you read something. That's right. You don't necessarily get faith the second time you hear something. You understand? That's why the Bible goes back to study. It's good to read, but it goes back to study. Why? What happens is as I'm studying that word, hearing it, and, and meditating upon it, going, the revelation of it is released to me, and that revelation will convince me. And when it convinces me, I'm ready to do it. See, it's one thing to hear the word, but doing it is another thing. And we only do what we believe. And I've heard the word, I can quote it, I'll tell you what it said, but I'm not ready to do it. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm not ready to do it is because I don't believe it yet. When I really begin to believe it, then I do it. That's Amen. Right. That's Amen. Key. Praise God. And so please understand the reading, the folks out there that you're working every day, you believe, believe in going to work. That don't mean you feel good about it. <laughs> that don't mean that day you're happy that you got to go, but you believe in it. Why? Because you, you've done it. You saw the benefit of it. That is getting that check. So what? You believe in working. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Some people say, well, I, you know, I go to work and stuff like that. But I know you believe in it. That, that belief system has caused an action in your life. Mm -hmm. So studying the word, God wants you to get it so there comes something that you believe in it. And once you believe in it, action ought to come. You'll do it. Mm-hmm. You're doing all right. Amen. Praise God. Let's continue now. Um, D, under Roman number three, D, we are to never let relationship, I'm sorry, revelation slip. We are to add to our foundations new revelation to make it stronger. When you read a word like grace, and you'll learn something by grace, you'll be able to tell it, but mm -hmm. grace is so expansive that you can keep adding to it and the more you add to it, the more revelation you get about grace the more you're going to believe in it and the more it will affect your life the more you will believe god some of us if we're not cautious will settle with a a elementary edu education or a, a, you know elementary revelation of a, something god has given up and god said don't stop there don't not stop there keep going Praise God. Revelation is ongoing in you and my yes, life. It is. Learning is ongoing in our life. Praise God. And when you and I will never reach it on this planet, but God is continually wanting us to keep 
pressing forward so he can keep revealing things to us in our life. Praise God. All right, Roman number four. God will allow the enemy access to you to test your faithfulness. It's easy to blame each other, praise God. But we need to understand some God will allow. That's why sometimes whether it's people, whether it's a situation, whether it's a job, whether it's this or that, God's going to allow it. Not that God, God is going to be tempted with evil. We already know that's that. Right. So God ain't going to nobody do evil for you. That's not God. But God will allow even the enemy access. Ask Job. The he devil came. My servant Job. He came to, <laughs> and God allowed him access to Job. Oh, Lord. But God already knew what Job was going to do in the end. The devil told me what it was going to happen. But please understand, this is why I want you to understand. But God, and yet Job, who was really a godly man and all that, Job saw some stuff, and when he saw the Lord, he said, you know what? I repent. I, you, <laughs> see, God can show us some things about ourselves that we haven't seen. And people can tell us, but it's a different when God revealed it to you. Praise God. You know, that, that latter part, too, of Job, though, mm -hmm. I don't want us to, to move past that either. Mm -hmm. Job said, though he slay me, I'm not going to trust him. Mm -hmm. And so we have to go in with, when we have faithfulness, we have to go in with that mindset. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what comes. It doesn't matter who said it. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I'm going in with the understanding that at the end of the book, I already win. Mm -hmm. And so, though he slay me, yet I'm going to still trust him. Yes, I would agree with that, Prince mm -hmm. Scott. It's very important for us to understand that. All right, on the Roman number four, uh, let's look at some, the Lord tries the heart. Psalms 26 and 2, examine me, <laughs> O Lord, and prove me. Test my heart and my mind. Lord, the psalmist was convinced he'd been walking. <laughs> How many of us pray that prayer? Lord, prove me. Prove me. Come test on, my Lord. heart. Go on, test me, Jesus. <laughs> You, you, say you better know what you're asking for. Wait a minute. The latter part is in my mind. My and thinking, my mind. Yeah. My thinking. Yeah, my, my what, thought what I'm thinking Absolutely of. right. But but you know what? We're going to find out. God's going to do it. <laughs> but, but but praise God. <laughs> this psalmist loved God so much, he believed he did right. But Lord, if I'm off, yeah. go ahead and test me. Because you know why? I want to get it right. I want to be right. Proverbs 17 and 3, the refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold. Glory. But the Lord tries the heart. Mm -hmm. So in other words, God's going to let us get in some furnace situations because God wants to drive out all the impurities. God's not testing us for him. He already knows our hearts, but he needs for us to see what he sees so we can come into an agreement with him. We can repent and turn away from it. We can see there's areas of weakness in our life, in our walk before God. And God's not mad with us. He's not upset with us. But he wants to take us higher in the things of the Lord. But those weaknesses, if he take us higher many times, may destroy us. Mm -hmm. And because he loves us, he doesn't want that to happen. So he said, you need to get this corrected. Praise God. And that's going to be very important. All right. On uh, Proverbs 27, 23, this is the Amplified Classic. As the refining pot for silver and the furnace for gold, bring forth all the impurities of the metal. So let a man be in his trial mm -hmm. of praise, R mm -hmm. ridding himself of all that is base or insincere, uh, insincere, for a man is judged by what he praises, oh my God, <laughs> and of what he boasts in. Hallelujah. What are you boasting in? <laughs> what are you praising more of uh, everything? And God, he, he said, even in a man praise, it's going to tell you a lot about him. What do they praise a lot about? You know, that's the folks that want to praise God. Yes, but Lord, they praise a man. They praise in the football team, the basketball team, some superstar, some R&B star. Uh, some, they praise him a lot, talk about a lot, you know, all of that. But praise God. It's very interesting that he says, now notice, I'm going to read it again. As the refining pot for silver and the furnace for gold bring forth all the impurities of the metal. In other words, the more the heat comes, oh, he it drives the impurity to the top. The, when God allows us in situations, allow people in our life, and boy, we begin to behave or, or misbehave or act in ways that are not godly. You know what? We can blame the people. What God said, I need you to see what was in you. Ooh, and when he shows us that, 
I need to claim it. And I need to be like David. Lord, it's I have me, sinned. Lord. It's me, Lord. I've <laughs> sinned. Praise God. I've sinned against you. You know? And so, but God is not um, getting upset. He's not, he needs for you and I to see it and acknowledge it. Because if we are faithful, he's faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse us. God said, I need that out of your life. I got some more stuff for you to do. But with that in there, where I want to send you, there's some folks, if you're you ready to jump on them folks, listen, there's some other folks there. You really want to be able to handle, and I need you. I know it's in you, and I want you to be able to do it. Praise God. So that's very, very important. Under, uh, You know, Pastor, yes. I, I want to just talk about that Proverbs 27, 21, just a little bit. Go ahead. As the refining pot for silver and the furnace for gold mm -hmm. bring forth all the impurities of the metal, so let a man be in his trial of praise mm -hmm. ridding himself of all that is base or insincere yeah for a man is judged by what he praises and of what he boasts of mm -hmm. you know um it, it, it's been a trying of us as believers mm -hmm. and this thing here when it says that the refining pot is used to bring all the impurities up out of silver and bring it through the furnace and it let people know whether it is pure gold mm -hmm. or pure silver. Mm -hmm. Right now, I believe that that's what's going on with the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's some some folks that have gone through the fire, gone through the furnace. But can I just encourage you that if you're in the furnace right now, that, that there's another one in the fire with you and he'll take us all the way through. We got to go all the way through it though because if we don't, if the silver didn't go all the way through it, or the gold didn't go all the way through it, it would have some still some impurities in it. Mm -hmm. So the metal part of that would not have, you know, uh, been bleached out of that. Mm -hmm. And so you, the price of that would not be the same as it was if it went all the way through the furnace and burnt out all of the impurities. Mm -hmm. God is burning out and allowing some impurities and some things that really that we don't really need in our life to be burnt up and we mad because it's, it's being burnt up mm -hmm. he said slow your roll i'm bringing it to the surface so that we can deal with it god ain't trying to expose mm -hmm. any of us no. he doesn't do that he's a good good father mm -hmm. but he will allow those things to come to the place that they have to come to a place as metal is tried as silver and gold is tried mm -hmm. you and i will be tried and we will be tried by the fire. But I do declare right now that in the middle of the fire, there's another one standing right beside you. Just go and turn to the left and to the right and see him. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because Jesus was tried. Yes, he was. Listen, he was called everything except a child of God. Mm -hmm. He had people constantly trying to provoke him, saying things to him. You know what? They got so mad with him because he wasn't getting mad. Jesus was just as calm as he can be. He had determined in his mind, I'm not going to let what people say or do mm -hmm. affect me that way. That's time he spoke to it, but even when he was speaking to it, he was speaking truth back to them. You know what I'm saying? That's time he just ignored it and then said, nothing. That's right. Amen. It, you it, have to answer. You know, and so w what happens is, there, he, what he was doing is, I'm going to let my peace reside. I'm the only one that can release my peace. Yeah. Or not. Not you. You, you can't, you can't release take it. it. No. <laughs> and when I release it, I don't want to blame you because of it. That's right. Because if I keep blaming you, that means I can keep doing it. You know, and what God wants to do through is, is again, this is testing. This is our faithfulness to his word. Mm -hmm. Faithfulness, what God is developing, let's please understand it again, the character of Christ likeness yes. in us. That's one of the most important things. All right. Let's continue. Praise God. In Malachi 3, 2 through 3, but who may abide in the day of his coming. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And who <laughs> shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire. Oh, no. And like, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, full of soap. Full of soap was for cleaning. <laughs> Praise God. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of yes, silver. Sir. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. I was just innocent says a few minutes ago, I believe this is what's going on with us now. Jesus is soon to return, but you know what he's doing now? Digging it up from the roof. He's allowing, <laughs> praise God, us to be purified. And that's what I'm saying. It, you know what? 
we can talk about faith, but do you have faith now? Or uh, 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 do you have fear now? What's controlling, faith or fear? God wants us to, to look. He's purifying us. Uh, now that everything's going, are we still able to do the thing that God wants us to do? Yes, Lord. Or, and, and we need to understand he's really showing what the true church is. See, religion is one thing. Mm -hmm. The believer is another thing. <laughs> are you a believer? Or are you just religious? Praise God. God. Religious folk know the scriptures. They, they got to look. Praise God. They know how to pray. Praise God. But if we have to be a doer, and the only way you can do it, you have to believe it. The only way you have to believe it, praise God, you have to be a true believer. Yes, Lord. That God's word is truth. Hallelujah. And you live by it. You operate by it. Praise God. And nothing in this earth has changed God's word. Mm -hmm. He's still God. Still sitting on the throne. His Hallelujah. word is still true. Glory to God. And what he said he'll do. Yes. Come on Glory here. Glory to God. Come on. And, and that's where we have to <laughs> come to a place right now. Praise God. Because what the devil wants to do is shut this whole body of believers and get rid of them because they're standing in the way of him doing what he needs to do. And Jesus said, that's why Jesus said, they're going to hate you. Mm -hmm. You are standing in the way. And yet we have sometimes if we're not caught the church and we need to do everything they saying. No, we're not going to do everything no, the world is saying for us to do. Praise God. We know the truth. That truth. And and, and we, <laughs> we know God. You know, we, we're acting like the people that don't know God. Amen. <laughs> Let's act like we do know God. Amen. If we know him, praise God. All right. Hallelujah. All right. Mel I mean, did we? yeah, we did that one. Praise yeah, God. God. <laughs> All right, we're under Roman number four, and we at B. God searches the heart. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah seventeen ten. I, the Lord, search the heart. I, the Lord. I try to reign. That's the mind, <laughs> even to give to every man according to his ways. See, the testing is not just testing for just to show you. God said, listen, I'm going to reward according to your ways mm -hmm. and according to the fruit of his doing. So please understand that. That's why I can't get caught up with you. You acting so crazy. And then I'm going to act crazy too. God said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying you. I'm trying that other person. And I'm going to reward you according to your doing. <laughs> so you understand? You, you don't read what you sow. You don't have to read what somebody else sow. That's your right. And so we have to make up our mind. We can't allow people to make us want to do something wrong. We need to do it right. So let me finish. I didn't finish. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try to reign even to give the every man according to his ways mm -hmm. and according to the fruit of his doing. Now, Pastor, can I read that out of the New Living Translation? You sure can. Again, that same Jeremiah 17, verse 10, and it reads, mm -hmm. But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. Oh, boy. I give all people Somebody say all people. All people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. You know, sometimes we sit and we, you know, I don't know why all that's happening. God says, but I, the Lord, search all hearts mm -hmm. and examine secret motives. And I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. He's never going to give us no more or no, no less. Than, than what I actually deserve. I would have said amen to that. <laughs> and last one is C. God is looking for faithfulness Come on here. and rewards faithfulness when he finds it. I believe that. Let me read that yes, one more amen. time. Amen. God is looking for faithfulness <laughs> and rewards faithfulness Yes, he does. when he finds it. Jeremiah said, out of Jeremiah said there, and he's gonna give them the fruit of mm, their doing. God, right. God will reward our faithfulness. So praise God. Amen. We got one more lesson on this faithfulness, and we're gonna be done. But I tell you what, it's challenging to me. Praise God. Yes, I look at it and I said, Lord, thank you, and amen, and help me again. Praise God. Because we all want to walk in it. I believe we all want to do which is right. That's right. That which brings God. I believe we all want to come to a place that first of all, let me be known as a servant. Of Jesus Christ. Yes. First and foremost, you know, not something else, not a preacher, not a pastor, not this, not that. First and foremost, let me be known as a servant of Jesus oh, Christ. I have took my will and submitted it to his will so that I could please him first yes. and foremost. Yes, thank you, Father. All right, praise God. Well, that's all we got. 
And amen. I tell you what, good word for me. Praise <laughs> God. I don't know if it was for you, but it was a good one for me. A good reminder. Praise God. Well, now listen, if you've never been born again, you cannot be faithful. The reason being, you can be faithful to a certain area. You can be faithful to a certain thing. But God wants to create a spirit of faithfulness. Yes. And you must be born again to do that. You must have received God's own spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, living on the inside of you because he's the one to help develop the faithfulness in you and mm -hmm. me. Praise God. So if you've never been born again, I'd like to pray for you right now. Jesus. And then we also like to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Father, I pray for anyone Thank under the sound of my voice that never made Jesus the Lord of their lives. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray that you would open the eyes of their yes, understanding. You, Help them to see how much you love them, that you have a plan for mm -hmm. them, and that, Father, you want to work in their lives. I pray it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, now, you might ask, why do I need to be saved? Well, the Bible said all have sinned. All have come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. And so what God is saying, there's not a human being as they walk up on the planet, save Jesus Christ, who has not been a sinner. Mm -hmm. We have a sin nature, and that happened as the fall. And so God said, listen, man cannot get himself out of this thing. That's right. I'm going to send my own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. He didn't sin. He lived without sin. And he's going to live on the earth and show them and then he's going to, listen, die for everyone's sin who will accept my free gift. I'm going to send Jesus. And the punishment that should have came on you and me, Jesus took the punishment for us. Thank you. Thank the you. death that Thank we you. should have died, he died. And he's rose again now from the dead, praise God. And the, so the Lord said, if you will accept the free gift, my son, and accept him as your Lord and as your Savior, and he, what he did how he died, paid for the price, I will credit it to your account. Come on. So that, and I will say that you are righteous. Righteous. Not because you earned it, but it came a free gift because you accepted my gift I gave to you. God so loved the world. Come on. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have my, 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 my. eternal life. Now, I pray you are ready to get this free gift. It's been wrapped just for you. God got a plan for your life. So if you're ready to do that, I'd like to lead you in a prayer right mm -hmm. now. The prayer itself won't save you, but if you mean it with all of your heart, then that's what God is looking for. All right, here I go. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. Father, please forgive me for my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid the full price yes, thank you, Lord. for all of my sins. I believe also that he rose again from the dead. And so, Father, I accept your free gift as Jesus being my Lord and my Savior. I invite Jesus to come into my heart, mm -hmm. to become my Lord, that means my master, and become my Savior. That's my deliverer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart right now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Now say amen. amen. Now if you meant that, and you meant it with all your heart, right now you're saved. <laughs> you accept that God's free gift has nothing to do with feelings and emotions, even though you may be feeling, you may feel overwhelmed now, you may be, feel like crying or whatever, but you may not feel anything. Mm -hmm. It's still just as true. Yes, thank you, Lord. Because God's word is truth. All right? Now, if you meant it with all your heart, I want to be the first to welcome you. Come on. Into the kingdom of God. Praise God. I salute yes, you today. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you for making the choice. You made a good thank one today. You, Hallelujah. Now, Sister Henderson is going to give you some further instructions. All right. Amen. God bless you. Yes. If you have just given your life to the Lord, uh, we would desire to come alongside of you and sow some material for growth uh, into your life. And if you're desiring to have that, uh, inside of the chat, I know they're placing that information, but you mm -hmm. can go right to the website of Bren Family Worship Center dot org. Mm -hmm. That is our website. On our homepage, there is a salvation button. All you need to do is push that button, mm -hmm. and it'll take you right to the area for you to submit your information. And we will follow up again with an email, or you can call the ministry at area code four one four eight seven three. 
8687. Praise and, God. And uh, we will be delighted to uh, have the opportunity to speak with you as well. Mm -hmm. And again, welcome to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Those of you that uh, is the very first time that you are viewing this broadcast, and if you are live now, if you will place that also in the chat for us. Praise Let God. us know that you're a first time timer for us, a first time guest. Yes. Because we want to sow some material for you, to you, if you so desire to have that as well. And again, thank you. Uh, for viewing this broadcast whenever it is that you're having the privilege mm -hmm. and uh, taking the time to, to watch and view this. Uh, I want to give just a few announcements and then we're going to call it an evening. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I'm going to ask if you will commit now to praying uh, for our Sisters Arise Women uh, Conference, our gathering that we have for this weekend, and, and specifically asking for all aspects of that uh, gathering. Uh, will you please uh, call out the name Mrs. Paula Cross mm -hmm. and Mrs. Jacqueline Salava. Mm -hmm. Those are our two uh, guest speakers, and we believe that God has placed a word in their mouth. Amen. And we want to draw out that word this weekend. Praise God. Those of you that are not going to be in attendance, will you commit to praying as well uh, for us, for our safety, and for everything that's going to take place uh, over this weekend as we gather uh, to celebrate, first of all, women as well as sisters arise mm -hmm. amen mm -hmm. uh, the ministry campuses because of this uh, conference is going to close 12 noon on this friday mm -hmm. so if there's anything that you need to take care of at either one of the campuses you will need to do it this week prior to 12 noon and that way uh, at that point uh, the campus uh, doors are going to be closed until uh, sunday morning mm -hmm. both campuses are open for sunday morning and we still have a few seats in both of the different campuses. If you're desiring to still register for that, they will be on a first come first serve basis, meaning that if you send your email over, uh, they will look at the time state uh, stamped on that uh, email mm -hmm. and determine those few seats that are left. So if you're desiring to be in the Milwaukee campus that opens at 7.30 a.m. and eight o'clock the service starts, mm -hmm. and then again at the Germantown location, uh, open doors open at 10 and the services start at 10 30. early morning prayer this friday and again next week we will again meet for group study and i believe that's going to be the last group study i'm not even sure well i think we have two more that one and then one more uh, for the month of august and then we will be offline for the entire month of september for group study mm -hmm. so we're placing that out there now mm -hmm. to let you know we will be offline for a group study, for Wednesday group study, for the entire month of September. And just want to just thank the Lord for each and every one of you. We honor the Lord for your presence, and we honor the Lord for you. We pray that your Wednesday, Thursday, whatever day you see this, it continue to be one that may God be praised and glorified. Amen. Praise God. Why don't you close it out in prayer? Amen. Yeah. You know, this morning when I awakened, when God awakened me, it, one scripture that he dropped in my spirit, and I want to use that to uh, close, and it was Genesis eighteen fourteen. Mm -hmm. And God asked me the question this morning, and I want to ask you the same thing. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Pastor? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. nothing. Father, we just thank you. Thank you, Father. Uh, that we come and we stand in the gap. Uh, concerning uh, every situation and circumstance that we might face. Mm -hmm. We say even now, Lord God, that there is nothing that is too hard for nothing, you. God. Nothing has been hid from mm -hmm. your view. You know exactly our down-sitting and our uprising. You know our thoughts are far off. And so, Father, we come and we say even now that you would take and look at the reins of our heart and that you would judge our hearts and our motives and that you would cause us to know that everything has been measured by your hand. Yes. No matter what we're facing, no matter what we're going through, mm -hmm. no matter what we just came out of, it has been measured by your hand. And we do declare with your word, there is nothing that is too hard for you. Yes. So we yes. say work out every situation and circumstance mm -hmm. that has anything to do with us and cause us to keep our eyes turned upon you. That, Father, as we look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, mm -hmm. we will endure everything for the joy of our salvation belongs in you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for who you are in all of the earth. Thank you that you dwelled in the midst of us uh, during this broadcast. Mm -hmm. And I say strengthen your people. Cause us this day to mount up in every situation. 
We bless you and we give you praise. We bless you and we give you great thanksgiving. And we thank you in no other name but Jesus tonight. Amen and amen. amen. Go forth and do the work of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. God bless you. God bless you. Appreciate you. We Hallelujah. love you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you.